Welcome to this pedagogy premiere on de-escalation. In this video, we'll explore the key principles of de-escalation and consider practical approaches to help calm stressful situations. To support your practice around de-escalation, a professional learning pack was launched in September 2022 by a group involving Pupil Support Service, Supporting Learner Service and Fife Council's Educational Psychology Service, along with the professional learning team. After you watch this video, you should access the handbook via the intranet. A number of guidance documents and policies are also available on the intranet to provide information and support for you and your colleagues. In order to assess where there are areas of strength or development within your setting, we'd recommend that you engage with the readiness toolkit linked to How Good Is Our School. This is a good way to gather and show evidence. The staff practice self-reflection and audit tool is categorised into three different areas relationships, skills and approaches, and support strategies. Here are some examples of reflections around relationships. You can also consider your skills and approaches. And finally, individual or group support strategies. We should reflect on our influence as a whole school team. What can we do? As an individual practitioner, what can I do? And where can we draw on the support or expertise of others? What can someone else do? We can also consider practical approaches within an individual's control, how we manage our own behaviour, what we know about the child or young person's vulnerabilities and risks, and taking the time to build relationships. We should also look at strategic approaches on the individual's influence. What can we develop our community to be able to do, which is driven by leadership committed to making it work? Leadership of supporting behaviour is not necessarily about formal leadership, but who has the experience or the influence to lead on this? Teachers, PSAs, principal teachers. Here are some useful reflective questions based on the previous slide. As an individual, you can consider your own resilience and the well-being of all. Levels of control or influence, the use of language. As a school, you can consider the ethos within your setting, the support and challenge of each other as colleagues. Thinking of others, you can consider partnership working and planning, or wider service strategy for relationships and well-being. It can be helpful to think about stressful situations in terms of a behaviour curve. For example, during the before stage, making sure the child or young person has what they need. This is about proactive management. In the during stage, risk management is about reducing the risks to all in a challenging incident and making sure that everyone goes safely and well at the end of the day. During the after stage, this is about review and reflection. Is everyone okay? Discussions with the child and staff involved may need to wait for 48 hours. People will have had time to reflect and emotions will have settled. Review proactive management plans and make changes where required. Here are some general strategies for consideration. Firstly, the only behaviour you can control is your own. 
For others, you can only influence their response. Emotions reflect back to the child what you're seeing if you feel it would be helpful because some young people don't realise the emotions they're feeling. Remain calm and non-judgmental. Try to refocus the child. Ensure that your responses are assertive, but not hostile or weak. Model what you want to see. How do you want adults to behave? Ensure that you praise where possible and be consistent in your approaches. Always remain respectful and empathic. There are some key principles of de-escalation worth holding on to. Avoid contributing to the incident with your own behaviour. Stay calm and be aware of your own thoughts and feelings, which may impact on the situation. Look for effective outcomes and always think towards positive. Minimise the language and keep things simple. Avoid confrontation and conflict. Try not to escalate the situation and ignore secondary behaviours. Focus on what's at hand. Try to give the child or young person an option. Help them see a way out and use your time effectively. We need to recognise the importance of communication and de-escalation. Does our body language and tone of voice truly reflect our spoken words? We might be saying the right things, but if our body language and tone of voice don't reflect that, our words won't be heard. Think about giving a message with our body language that we are calm, in control, and non-threatening. Crowding might make a child react, so think about the number of people involved. Consider what your shoulders are doing and what about your arms. Keep your voice calm and steady. Keep the volume low. Don't interrupt and leave plenty of pauses for thought. Try to use a reassuring tone, saying little but giving clear instructions. Speak slowly and maybe perhaps talk about an unrelated topic to support with distraction. Words are important too. Try depersonalising statements by using the term we. Maybe we should go outside. I understand rather than you need to put that chair down. We need to let pupils know that we can help them to manage the situation and their feelings and behaviours. Let's explore body language in more detail. Keep personal space. Position yourself at a 45 degree angle so that you're less threatening. Leave an exit. Try not to block or corner the pupil. Sitting down can sometimes help. Use open hand gestures. Use gentle eye contact. This shows you're attentive, but use limited or fleeting eye contact. Maintain a neutral and calm facial expression and ensure that your body language is relaxed. When focusing on our verbal responses, keep your voice calm and steady. Keep the volume low. Don't interrupt. Leave pauses between the words you're saying. Make sure your tone is reassuring. Say little but give clear instructions. Speak slowly and perhaps talk about an unrelated topic if appropriate. The following phrases can help reassure the pupil and calm situations down. Using we, not you. Focus on the situation and not the person. Use reassuring talk. We can both take a few minutes and have a rest. There's nowhere we need to go just now. Clarify and summarise what's been said or label the emotion. You've told me that you're feeling angry at John, is that right? 
Give acknowledgement and acceptance. I hear what you're saying. Say what you want to happen and frame it positively. Don't use, don't do. Be curious and ask about the situation. Do you want to tell me what's happened? When in a crisis situation, it's helpful to stay as calm as possible and to think positively, not, I need to do something, I don't know what to do, they need to do what I say, I'm in charge here. You might have other things to tell yourself subconsciously. Here are some suggestions for positive thinking. I'm calm and I'll remain calm. I can manage this situation. I'm not a threat to them. I'm in control of myself and I can work with them. We can sort this out. We have time and there's no rush here. Other people can support me if I need them. When thinking about physical intervention, there is a short, easy to access version of the physical intervention guidance on the intranet. If using the audit tools, you identify that this is an area of focus for your school, the first step for the planning group is to be review the short term guidance. Using this to engage staff in school and discussions, but there will always be grey areas. The most important thing is being confident about dynamic risk assessment in the moment. Staff have a duty of care and physical intervention as part of planned intervention can only be used where appropriate and approved training has taken place. Staff need to be aware of what constitutes physical intervention and their rights. And recent guidance on this physical intervention is available on Fife's intranet. Thank you for engaging with this pedagogy premiere.